हेलो माय डियर फ्रेंड्स आई एम शुभम फ्रॉम लर्नो हब द फ्री लर्निंग प्लेटफॉर्म वेर यू कैन स्टडी फिजिक्स केमिस्ट्री मैथ्स बायोलॉजी एब्सोल्यूटली फॉर फ्री एट लर्नो हब डॉट कॉम सो देन लेट स्टार्ट सो फ्रेंड्स एज यू ऑल नो वी आर स्टडिंग यूर आई सी एस सी केमिस्ट्री क्लास टेंथ राइट चैप्टर नंबर सेवन एंड इन दिस वीडियो we are going to cover all the concepts of this chapter metallurgy also along with it after a particular topic we are also going to solve some questions which have been asked in your previous year exams so that you would get a fair idea that how questions are being asked from this chapter okay so without wasting much time let's start and let's rock now let's see the next part of the extraction of aluminum that is the hall herolds process okay so till now we have got alumina aluminum oxide through the bayer's process right now we are going to pick out our aluminum from this alumina and our job is done right but to get the aluminum from alumina we have to remove this oxygen right so what we what we feel what what we can know from this reaction is see we have to remove the oxygen that means we have to reduce this alumina okay because reduction is we know the removal of oxygen means reduction so we have to remove the oxygen from here from this alumina to get our aluminum so we have to carry out reduction fine we have reached this point but now most of the but now there are some metal oxides okay which which can be reduced by some common reducing agents just like carbon carbon monoxide hydrogen okay but our aluminum oxide okay it is very stable oxide so this aluminum is having very much good relation good attraction with the oxygen that's why it's stable and it is not willing to lose this oxygen very easily okay that's why we cannot reduce it okay we cannot remove the oxygen which means we cannot reduce it with the help of this common reducing agents okay not with ease we cannot reduce it with ease okay by using this common reducing agents now for that purpose such metal oxides which cannot be reduced by the common reducing agents with ease we need to reduce them by using electrolysis okay that's the option to us option with us and such reduction is called as electrolytic reduction see simply the reduction we are doing it with the help of electrolysis so electrolytic reduction but now we are going to simply see the electrolytic reduction of alumina okay that is called as the hall herolds process but before starting hall herolds process i will quickly tell you some interesting thing about this process okay about the history of this process how we have reached this process okay we know that now we have to do electrolysis okay of alumina okay then only that alumina will get reduced and we would get aluminum fine but there are some problems with this okay alumina okay we need to use it in molten form first of all we cannot use it in the aqueous state why because alumina okay this al2o3 aluminum oxide is insoluble in water okay very very less soluble it it is very very less soluble okay in water so we can just simply say it is insoluble in water now since if it is insoluble in water okay it would just settle down at the bottom it would not get mixed up right so we cannot use this as an electrolyte we have studied in electrolysis everything about electrolyte right so we cannot use this as an electrolyte okay because here in this water the in this aqueous solution of alumina there would be no ions okay because our alumina is not getting dissolved in water itself so that's why we need to use molten alumina first of all but now there is problem again by using molten alumina why because molten alumina fine we can use it we can carry out the electrolysis okay but this alumina okay is is present in its molten state at around 200 2050 degrees celsius this much high temperature okay but again there is no problem in developing this much high temperature fine but the problem again arises where when we carry out the electrolysis okay we all know that the cations migrate towards cathode so in this alumina okay it's pretty simple that aluminum is the aluminum 3 plus are the cations okay oxide okay o2 minus ions are the anions so aluminum 3 plus would migrate towards cathode this would migrate towards anode but again problem was once it is migrating towards cathode and it is forming aluminum okay at this much high temperature 2050 degree celsius okay which is created to keep the alumina in molten state our aluminum itself is getting vaporized okay now how we would collect this aluminum then it becomes very difficult for us to collect this vapor aluminum c right 
now again we have got a problem so now this problem was solved by hall okay h a l l and how he solved this problem okay he he did so much research and he found that when he added this cryolite okay we have studied this cryolite formula na3 al f6 okay what happened is our alumina's melting point okay it reduced to 950 degrees celsius okay from 2050 degrees celsius it reduced to 950 degrees celsius now why i'm telling this you entire story in order to make you remember that why we are using cryolite here because frequently in exams they are being asked they, they have asked that why we use cryolite in the electrolytic reduction of alumina okay so we use cryolite because it makes the melting point of alumina to lower down to 950 degrees celsius and once once it is getting melted at 950 degrees celsius the aluminum which we would get that would not get vaporized right and then we could be easily then it would be for it, it would be like easy for us to collect that aluminum okay very fine now let's start to study the hall herolds process okay now how we would extract aluminum from our alumina by using electrolysis so we need to carry out electrolysis that's very simple very fine first we would start with the electrolytic cell okay now in order to carry the electrolysis we need a electrolytic cell okay which is made up of c a uh, iron tank okay which is rectangular but it is having a sloping bottom okay so i would just make here the rectangular tank okay and i'm making the sloping bottom as well okay fine so now why is this sloping bottom first of all i will tell you but first let's see what else is there in our electrolytic cell we have to line this rectangular tank on the inner side okay on the inner side with gas carbon okay so gas carbon is simply the form of carbon okay and we are going to have the inner lining okay of this gas carbon and this would be acting as a cathode okay in our electrolysis okay our gas carbon just like it's it's just like graphite only so that's why it is also good conductor of electricity that's why we can use it as cathode okay now why the sloping bottom see because we know aluminum would aluminum ions would come towards cathode they would migrate to the cathode and they would then get discharged at the cathode okay accept the electrons and would form aluminum atoms and this aluminum atoms okay at this 950 degree celsius they are, they are in molten state okay they don't get vaporized thanks to the temperature but at 950 degree celsius they are in molten state so this molten aluminum okay now it would be easy for this molten aluminum to just slide over okay and come out of this come out of this electrolytic cell okay so that's why we are making the bottom as sloping fine very simple now moving ahead we need to use electrolyte right in electrolysis and our electrolyte absolutely we are going to use first means the composition would be first alumina would be present correct along with it we know that hall discovered the discovered the process because means he got to the solution because of this cryolite so this is also the part of the electrolyte and along with it we are using fluorspar so we know the cryolite's formula na3lf6 i have shown you the last slide fluorspar is calcium fluoride caf2 okay now you need to remember the percentage as well we are taking 20% of alumina okay very less percent of alumina is electrolyte 60% of cryolite and 20% of fluorspar so total making 100% okay in this electrolyte clear with this part now here frequently questions are being asked that why we use cryolite why we use fluorspar along with alumina as an electrolyte in this hall herolds process okay so first of all cryolite and fluorspar okay both of them we use the first reason is it acts as solvent for the electrolyte okay and second one is it is enhancing the conductivity of alumina okay now why why is it required to enhance the conductivity because pure alumina just like pure water it is almost non conductor of electricity okay so now we would need something that would just enhance its conductivity and that's why we are using cryolite and fluorspar these two things solvent and 
to enhance the index conductivity of the alumina apart from it we have just now seen the history so in that cryolites again function is very important that it lowers the melting point of alumina from 2050 degree celsius to 950 degree celsius okay and then this 950 degree celsius i have told you aluminum would not vaporize aluminum is just present in the molten state and so can so we can easily collect the molten aluminum because it would just settle down at the bottom of the tank and we can just collect it okay clear with this part okay now some more things we are we are going to require apart from the electrolytic cell and just the electrolyte okay we have also seen which electrode as a cathode we are going to use but we are remaining with the anode as well okay and also some some more things which is first of all we are going to use powdered coke okay we are going to sprinkle this powder coke uh, coke sorry on the top of this electrolyte okay now why is it so there are two reasons this is also being asked in the exams first of all in order to reduce the loss of heat okay through the electrolyte by radiation simply when you are heating this electrolyte okay the heat would be lost okay so in order to prevent the loss of heat okay we are using powdered coke now you would say sir why we are heat we are heating the electrolyte yes we are heating the electrolyte i will tell you about it also okay but first of all you just remember that yes powder coke is used to reduce the heat loss by radiation simply the heat loss okay because we are heating the electrolyte so that heat loss should not take place the heat should not go out of the electrolyte so we are coating the electrolyte with the powdered coke okay just sprinkling the powder coke on the top of the electrolyte another reason is it is preventing the burning of anode now this we will see when we would see the electrode reactions that time you would clearly understand it okay don't worry i will tell you now temperature we are going to yes yeah yeah we are heating it because we have to keep the alumina in molten state correct so that's why that heat should not be lost that's why we are using powdered coke and yes we are heating it to 950 degree celsius okay because at this temperature also our alumina is getting melted okay because of the cryolite we have studied and how we are heating by electric heating electrical heating now what is this electrical heating you maybe have used the electrical heaters in your home for heating the water okay so water heaters we just immerse that heaters into the water and we just plug to the switch and we just switch on the plug so the electricity okay is converted into heat energy and that heat energy is given to the water and our water becomes warm right so that is electrical heating so same type of heating we are using here in order to heat the heat the electrolyte mixture okay and voltage we are using okay we need to supply the electric current right until and unless we don't supply the electric current in electrolysis the elect the reactions won't take place right so for supplying the electric current we are using some voltage that is 5 to 6 volts and it is kept low why because we don't want our cryolite to get decomposed okay if it gets decomposed then again our alumina would not melt at 950 degrees celsius it would take up the temperature higher to 2000 degrees celsius and at that time we know the problem our aluminum which we would obtain that would get vaporized right so this should not happen that's why we are keeping the voltage low so that our cryolite remains intact it doesn't decompose and our problem is not getting worst okay we are we are like have we are like having the control of the things and last one is we are going to use the anode okay we have seen water cathodes we are going to use the anode which are graphite rods and we are going to immerse those graphite rods into this electrolyte mixture very clear that's it okay now let's quickly see ionization reactions and electrode reactions these reactions would help us give an insight that what actually is happening in this electrolysis how our aluminium we are getting okay how the aluminium is getting collected okay fine so ionization reactions very simple simple reactions are there these reactions are simply the these reactions would start from those components okay which are the components of our electrolytic mixture so which are the components of our electrolytic mixture first of all we are using alumina right most important component okay actually we are doing the electrolysis of molten alumina itself then cryolite na3 alf6 okay and then fluorospar calcium fluoride now their ionization reactions okay alumina two aluminium atoms so two aluminium ions okay 2al3 plus three oxygen atoms so three oxide ions okay same way three sodium ions okay sorry three sodium ions then one aluminium ion okay since one aluminium atom is there six fluoride ions okay and then calcium calcium fluoride one calcium so calcium ion one calcium ion and two fluoride ions okay 
so if you would know actually how to write this ionization reactions if you have studied the electrolysis chapter okay in that electrolysis chapter we have written lot of ionization reactions okay then moving ahead electrode reactions now what you have to remember actually simply is out of these all ions which are present in this electrolytic mixture aluminum ions would get discharged at the cathode and oxide ions would get discharged at the anode okay so aluminum ions here they would move towards the cathode and get discharged here oxide ions they would go towards the anode and they would get discharged here okay now how they would get discharged we all know cations accept the electron from the cathode and then they get discharged okay because they are having positive charge so they need electron to get discharged okay so our aluminium ion okay it is a cation and it would gain three electrons okay in order to get discharged and form an aluminium atom okay now these three electrons are given up by the cathode same way at anode our oxide ion would go now we know anions give up the electron to the anode so oxide ions would give up the electron to the anode so actually it would give two electrons first of all and it would form an oxygen atom okay by giving up two electrons it would become neutral oxygen atom but this neutral oxygen atom doesn't stay like that only okay it is not that much stable so it combines with some another oxygen atom okay and it forms an oxygen molecule okay sorry oxygen molecule in this way so when it combines with an, another oxygen atom so this means that another oxide ion would be required right so suppose it is combining with this oxygen atom okay but this oxygen atom would again form from an another oxide ion right in the same way as this is formed right so that means two oxide ions are required so two oxide ions are required here fine two oxide ions are giving us two oxygen atoms which are in turn combining see two oxide ions okay are giving us two oxygen atom which are in turn combining with each other and forming oxygen molecule and four electrons very simple right but the rule here is we know in the electrolysis the number of electrons given up by the cathode is always equal to the number of electrons gained by the anode right we have studied this rule so here the number of electrons given up by the cathode are 3 the number of electrons gained by the anode are 4 it is not the same so we need to make it same so how we can make it same the three electrons okay and four electrons what would be the common number for them 12 right so three fours are 12 so i would just multiply this equation with four so it would form 12 electrons here i would just multiply this with three so it would form 12 electrons see four threes are 12 okay so now what you have to do is you have to just multiply this with three and four respectively so what would happen see four al3 plus would form four okay i'm just writing here four al3 plus okay plus 3 for the 12 electrons okay 3 for the 12 electrons would give me four aluminium atoms so four aluminium atoms and same way when i'm multiplying this equation okay this one with three so i would get two threes are six oxide ions which is giving me three oxygen molecules and three for the 12 electrons now what i need to do is for writing the net reaction okay i need to simply cancel out the same species on the opposite sides of the reaction okay so this is this reactant side it is having 12 electrons and another reactions reactant side it is having 12 electrons yes so i would just cancel out and nothing else would get cancelled okay because nothing is matching with each other okay four aluminium ions we are not finding it four aluminium ions here there are no four elements here okay so nothing is getting cancelled so now we have to just simply write whatever the reactants are there in the both the reaction on this side on the reactant side and whatever the products are there on the product side okay of the final reaction so four al3 plus okay plus six o2 minus okay is giving us four aluminium and three oxygen okay so this is our net reaction very clear what is actually happening we are getting aluminium okay at cathode okay here aluminium is getting deposited at the cathode and i have told you at 950 degrees celsius it is in the molten state okay so here in this way we can collect it okay from this pipe and oxygen is liberated at the anode 
Okay, now there comes the role of these things. Okay, there comes the twist in the story. Let's see what it is. So as I have told you, aluminum is deposited at the cathode and we can collect the molten aluminum, right? Molten, molten aluminum. And this molten aluminum, which is collected at the cathode, okay, is 99.8% pure. See how much pure we got. But still, we are humans. We always want the things to be very much perfect, right? So for that purpose, again, we try to purify it more than the 99.8%. But for that purpose, we need again to cal carry out electrolysis. And this part is not there in our syllabus. Okay, so no need to worry about how we again further purify this 99.8% pure aluminum. Fine, our story of aluminum ends here. But the things again, there are some things which, which need to be studied, which is what is happening actually at the anode is oxygen gas is liberating at the anode. And this oxygen gas is creating a mess. Why? Because our anode, okay, is graphite and graphite means carbon, right? So it is this oxygen gas, which is liberating at the anode. It is reacting with our graphite anode. Okay. This graphite anode, which is actually carbon, graphite is carbon. So how it is reacting? See this oxygen, okay, is reacting first with the carbon and it is forming carbon monoxide. And this carbon monoxide again, in turn is then converted into carbon dioxide okay now these are very simple simple reactions you can just balance it on your own so what is forming this oxygen is reacting with our graphite anode which means carbon and it is forming carbon dioxide okay so we can see that our anode our carbon okay is forming is getting converted into carbon dioxide which means it is getting oxidized right so our carbon is getting oxidized right since it is forming carbon dioxide and what is our carbon carbon is our actually graphite okay and in the anode so we can say our anode is getting oxidized clear so this we call it as oxidation of anode and the same process since it is getting oxidized so we also call this process as burning of anode okay now you would remember that see i have told you why we sprinkle the powdered coke on the top of the electrolyte but before that see because this anode gets oxidized okay because of the liberation of oxygen gas okay so our carbon of the anode okay it is forming carbon dioxide and it is getting liberated so our carbon is getting reduced right our graph our carbon from the anode is getting reduced 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 and finally our anode gets vanished diminishes okay all the carbon of the anode gets vanished because graphite is actually carbon so since because of this we need to periodically replace the anode so this question can also be asked why we need to periodically replace the anode in case of electrolysis of molten alumina or in Hollerold's process okay now for this we are having some simple alternative okay we can prevent this from happening for some extent at some extent how by sprinkling the powdered coke at the top of the electrolyte now what this powdered coke would do powdered coke is simply actually carbon okay now instead of our graphite anode okay or instead of our carbon of anode getting oxidized to carbon dioxide this powdered coke's carbon would get oxidized to carbon dioxide and in turn it would save our carbon of the anode from getting oxidized okay so that's why i have told you that i would tell you later why we are using the sprinkle why we are using powdered coke or we are sprinkling powdered coke at the top of the electrolyte this was the second reason clear with this very interesting part okay now let's see one more interesting thing last one that when in the circuit okay i have shown you that this is a circuit okay negatively charged okay positively charged in this way and the anodes are being suspended in the electrolyte fine and this is our electrolytic rectangular cell and our cathode okay so this is our electrolytic rectangular cell this is our cathode okay okay this is the cathode so we would connect the bulb here now we know the electricity is passing through the elect through this electrolytic mixture fine so electrons are moving from the negative terminal we know always they start moving from the negative terminal they reach the cathode from the cathode the electrons are being given up to the cations and at the same time the electrons are being loosed by the anions to the anode and this 
number of electrons which are lost by the cathode and which are gained by the anode are same so we can actually say that electrons are getting transferred in disguise right the current is getting transferred through the electrolyte and same electrons move towards the anode and they glow this bulb because of this now the circuit is getting completed right the electrons are reaching here if the electrons are not reaching here the bulb will not glow but since they are reaching here these electrons now flow through this circuit flow through this circuit and bulb is glowing okay right we know this basic thing and it reaches the positive terminal and the same thing goes on again the electron from the negative terminal would travel the same path but what would happen okay how we would get the indication that our alumina is decreasing okay the content of alumina because we know we are having only 20% alumina right al2o3 in our electrolytic mixture rest 80% is cryolite and fluorspar what we are actually doing is we are actually carrying out the electrolysis of alumina okay and see this cryolite and fluorspar i have told you on in the beginning that both of them are actually good conductors okay that's why we are using to enhance the conductivity of alumina correct so if at all our alumina is absent then too they would conduct electricity and they would conduct electricity more with much more uh, with much more greater ease because they are good conductors okay alumina is a poor conductor okay or almost non conductor right so if the content of alumina is decreasing and decreasing and decreasing and only cryolite and fluorspar is remaining in our electrolytic cell okay so what would happen they would then try to conduct electricity very easily and very nicely and since they are good conductors they would conduct more and more amount of electricity right and si since more and more amount of electricity would be conducted okay because now alumina's content is less which was hindering our conductivity so our bulb here it would glow brightly okay more brightly than it was getting than it was glowing okay from the initial point and when it starts to glow brightly we can just click the thing can just we can just figure out that oh yes our alumina is decreasing that's why our cryolite and fluorspar okay they are easily conducting the electricity and this factor since it is decreasing the bulb is glowing brightly because of the easy conduction of electricity more conduction of electricity through the electrolyte okay now when this indicates us the bulb is glowing brightly we need to add on more alumina okay and again what would happen since we are adding more alumina so since we are adding again alumina so it would just hinder the electrical conductivity again because it is poor one so all the, both of them would try to make the efforts and increase its conductivity okay so in turn they would not conduct much more electricity okay so that's why we can just pay up pay attention to this glowing of the bulb which would indicate us that yes our alumina is decreasing and we need to put more and more alumina in order to continue the electrolysis of our molten alumina okay and get aluminum out of this molten alumina clear okay so now let's see the so very simple simple questions are being asked we have already studied all the concepts so i hope you would be easily able to answer these questions okay name the following element a monovalent non metal okay fine present in fluorspar so fluorspar is this we are we know calcium fluoride now in this which one is non metal we know calcium is metal fluorine is non metal and yes another another hint they have given monovalent yes because fluorine okay is monovalent because it only just needs one more electron and it would form this fluoride ions okay they give up the electron okay and it would form fluorine atom okay so valency we know the number of electrons which are being given up or being taken up or being shared so since it is giving up one electron so that is why we call it as monovalent so monovalent non metal see fluorine okay present in fluorspar clear fine moving to the next question give the chemical formula of one bauxite we already know al2o3.2h2o cryolite na3alf6 so many times we have written right sodium aluminate we have seen in the beers process nalo2 right sodium aluminate is same as that of sodium metal aluminate okay so if they ask you sodium metal aluminate or sodium aluminate you have to write the same formula clear with this thing answer the following questions based on the extraction of aluminium from the alumina now once you see the extraction of aluminium from alumina right this means hall erolds process because in hall erolds process only we extract aluminium from alumina because after beers process we get 
alumina, right? Which we use in Hollerol's process. So this is about Hollerol's process. Now, what they're seeing, extraction of aluminum from alumina by Hollerol's process, fine? If at all they have not given you Hollerol's process, you can just figure it out. What is the function of cryolite used along with alumina as the electrolyte? Now, we have already seen the functions of cryolite. First, we have seen along with fluorospar, cryolite and fluorospar, both of them act as solvent. Okay, and they also enhance the conductivity of alumina and the one more special function of cryolite, which was the discovery which was made by Hall, very important, that it just reduces the melting point of the alumina from 2050 degrees Celsius to 950 degrees Celsius. Okay, clear. Next question is why is powdered coke sprinkled on the top of the electrolyte? They have already seen the two reasons. First of all, to reduce the loss of heat, right, to prevent the loss of heat by radiation, okay, from the electrolyte. And the second one was to prevent the burning of anode, right? Powder cro powdered coke protects the graphite rods of the anode from oxidation, which is also called as burning of anode, correct? And why was this happening? Because of the oxygen released at the anode. Okay, so you can just write the entire thing, okay? Or you can simply write powdered coke prevents the burning of the anode. This also would work, but you should know what is actually burning of anode. If you know, then you can also write this thing also as well, okay? Next is name the electrode from which aluminium is collected, which electrode from, from which aluminium is collected, right? Aluminium ions migrate towards cathode, right? So which is the electrode? Cathode. And the last one is the name the gas evolved in the following case. Alumina undergoes electrolytic reduction. So alumina's electrolytic reduction we have just now seen. Which gas would be evolved? Okay, so don't write here carbon dioxide. The electrolysis process is actually giving us oxygen okay this oxygen is reacting with the anode and it is forming carbon dioxide but the right answer is oxygen here okay clear with this next one is write the equation for the formation of aluminium at the cathode during the electrolysis of alumina again the same thing okay so we have to write the equation for the formation of aluminium okay at cathode so simply the cathode reaction we have to write okay so we have already seen this cathode reaction you can just go back in the video you can just see okay four aluminium three plus ions are required okay which accept 12 electrons correct four threes are 12 plus so 12 minus electrons are being accepted and they give us four aluminium atoms Okay, so this was the reaction. How we figured it out, you can just go back in the video and you can see. This you have to write in the exam. Okay, and the last one, answer the following questions with respect to the electrolytic process in the extraction of aluminium. So, electrolytic process in the extraction of aluminium is Hollerol's process, right? Identify the components of electrolyte other than pure alumina and the role played by each. So, what are the components other than the alumina? Okay, fluorospar and cryolite. You know, we have seen already, right, in the previous questions, that what is the role of cryolite and fluorospar's role is actually there are two roles which act, which also which is acts as solvent okay in the for the electrolyte mixture electrolytic mixture and second one is it enhances the conductivity okay of the alumina very simple and explain why powdered coke is sprinkled over the electrolytic mixture we have already solved this also right just now we have seen clear now let's see the last topic of this chapter which is alloys okay but it's very important, okay, because the questions are also being asked from this topic very frequently. So, what is an alloy? Okay, let's start with it. So, alloy is simply a homogeneous mixture. Okay, now what does this homogeneous mixture means? When you are mixing some two or more things, okay, just like if I'm adding sugar in water, okay, so after adding sugar in water and after stirring this, Okay, what I would get is sugar solution, correct? And this sugar solution, if you would try to find out, the sugar and water molecules are like, they are present everywhere, okay, uniformly. Okay, it is not like that, that sugar molecules are being present here somewhere and there are so many water molecules here only. Okay, you would find sugar settling down here and water molecules are here above. Okay, this is not the case. If you would add sugar and water and if you would mix it okay a particular amount of sugar if you would add it would give you a very good homogeneous mixture okay and that is called a solution we have studied this thing so in the same way but if you would add suppose kerosene in water okay so now you won't get 
होमोजीनियस मिक्सचर ओके केरोसिन वोट गेट डिजॉल्व इन द वॉटर कंप्लीटली यू वुड फाइंड केरोसिन केरोसिन मॉलिक्यूल्स इन द सम पार्ट वॉटर मॉलिक्यूल पार्ट वॉटर 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 मॉलिक्यूल्स पार्ट इन द सम पार्ट ऑफ द सोल्यूशन राइट इफ यू वुड एड ऑइल ओके सो दैट ऑल्सो सेम केस इट वुड नॉट बी होमोजीनियस मिक्सचर क्लियर क्लियर विद दिस वॉट इज होमोजीनियस मिक्सचर सो अलॉय इज अ होमोजीनियस मिक्सचर ओके दिस इज अ हाइड्रोजीनियस मिक्सचर शुगर सोल्यूशन ओके विथ वॉटर इज होमोजीनियस मिक्सचर सो सेम वे अलॉय इज अ होमोजीनियस मिक्सचर लाइक दिस ओके बट मिक्सचर ऑफ वॉट ऑफ टू और मोर मेटल्स ओके सो नाउ यू वुड बी लाइक सरप्राइज ओ हाउ वी कैन मिक्स टू और मोर मेटल्स राइट डोंट वी आर गोइंग टू सी हाउ वी मेक अलॉयज ओके सो अलॉय इज अ होमोजीनियस मिक्सचर ऑफ टू और मोर मेटल्स और सिंपली इट इज अ होमोजीनियस मिक्सचर ऑफ मेटल्स विथ नॉन मेटल्स ओके वेरी क्लियर लेट्स सी एग्जाम्पल सो दैट इट वुड बी क्लियर फॉर यू सो होमोजीनियस मिक्सचर ऑफ टू और मोर मेटल्स ओके हियर सी टू मेटल्स होमोजीनियस मिक्सचर ब्रास ओके ब्रास इज एन अलॉय ओके ऑफ कॉपर एंड जिंक ओके वेन वी आर मिक्सिंग कॉपर एंड जिंक ओके एंड वी आर फॉर्मिंग दर होमोजीनियस मिक्सचर वी गेट ब्रास क्लियर देन डू एलुमिन ओके This is an alloy of aluminium, copper, manganese. Sorry, manganese and magnesium. Okay, so when we are mixing all these metals, okay, and making the homogeneous mixture, we get dual aluminium. And same way now, see stainless steel. It is having these metals, chromium, iron, nickel. Okay, but along with it, we are having non-metal as well. Okay, so homogeneous mixture of metals with non-metals. See, homogeneous mixture of metals with non-metals. Clear with this part? Now, what is the purpose of making alloys then? Okay, first of all. to increase the strength okay we are having iron but if we want to increase the strength of iron we would make we would use this iron and we would make steel from it okay stainless steel okay don't worry we are going to see the composition of steel what is what is steel made up of it is made up of iron it is made up of chromium it is made up of nickel and it is made up of carbon okay we would see in detail how much percentage is there but first of all you should understand this thing that why we are making alloys first is to increase the strength iron strength can be increased if we make if you use this iron and make an alloy which is called as stainless steel stainless steel is very tough you would have heard about it a lot stainless steel okay we use stainless steel a lot okay in our day to day life second is appearance so if you want a gold like appearance okay what we would make is we would make an aluminum bronze alloy okay which is formed by mixing aluminum and copper because it is having gold like appearance so that you can fool people around you okay by showing the gold like appearance finally they would figure out that it is not pure gold but for visualization for for appearance purpose at at least you can just fool the people by making aluminum bronze and telling them that this is the gold <laughs> okay because it looks like gold next is resistance to electricity so if we want some material which is having very high resistance to electricity okay so that's for that purpose also we make alloys okay we make this nichrome alloy this is made up of c nickel from its name you can just remember nickel then chromium okay nickel chromium and sorry nickel chromium and rest is iron okay and this nichrome is actually having very much high resistance okay than copper okay now why we why we need the materials which are having resistance to the electricity in order to produce heat and all those things okay you would learn this in physics because resistance produces heat okay so this nichrome is actually having more resistance than the metal okay copper clear for this purpose we also prepare alloys then to make a hard material like diamond so if you want to make a hard material as as hard as diamond we can we can make an alloy carboloy okay a very interesting name see carboloy okay and what it is made up of carbon cobalt and tungsten so after making carboloy you would get a material which is as hard as diamond right very interesting and last one is sound producing capacity if we want a higher sound producing capacity than the metal okay or if we want a material which is having very high sound producing capacity okay so we can make an alloy so for example see bell metal this is an alloy which is made up of copper and tin okay and this copper and tin's alloy which is bell metal it is having more sound producing capacity than individual copper and individual tin okay very interesting now let's further see how we can make alloys okay very simple process so there are two process by which we can make alloys first is by simply melting the metals together or by fusing the metals together okay fusing means melting okay so melting the metals together we can make an alloy so brass how we make we melt copper and zinc okay fuse means melt so we melt copper and zinc together okay 
वेरी क्लियर देन कंप्रेसिंग फाइनली डिवाइडेड मेटल्स सो वी वुड फर्स्ट डिवाइड द मेटल्स वेरी फाइन ओके वेरी फाइन एंड देन वी वुड कंप्रेस देम ओके देन वी वुड गेट एन अलॉय सो एग्जाम्पल इज वुड मेटल दिस इज एन अलॉय ऑफ टिन लेड बिस्मत एंड कैडमियम ओके नाउ लेट सी सम एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ अलॉयज ओके विच वी हैव टू स्टडी इन आर सिलेबस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल एंड दोज एग्जाम्पल्स वॉट वी हैव टू स्टडी वी हैव टू स्टडी दर कंपोजिशन दैट how which metals are used to make that alloy and in how much percentage that is called as composition and the uses also okay of some alloys so we are going to study six alloys okay first we are going to study the alloys of this uh, aluminium okay aluminium is a principal metal here see because why i am telling you principal metal because aluminium is maximum okay in percentage in both these alloys so first we would start with duralumin we have just now seen what is duralumin means which metals it is formed okay in the example itself duralumin is formed from aluminium it is formed from by mixing aluminium copper magnesium and manganese okay these four metals and it is very important to remember the compositions as well okay because they may ask you in exam clear so aluminium copper and then you can just remember magnesium and manganese so both are having some mm sound right so aluminium copper magnesium manganese clear now its composition is also very easy see i have told you principal metal for both of them is aluminium so you can just figure out from your brain that yes highest amount of percentage would be of aluminium so here see aluminium is having 95 percentage very done very well done now how you would remember the rest of the percentage rest of the elements percentage this magnesium and manganese are having 0.5 0.5 percent see so this would make 1 so 95 plus 0.5 0.5 is 1 which means 95 plus 1 is 96 so remaining is 4 percent which would be copper in this way you can remember okay make some simple tricks like this and you can remember the percentage composition uh, per, the composition okay now where do aluminum is used very very interesting use see this duralumin is used for making bodies of aircraft for buses okay bodies of buses bodies of tube trains why because it is not only hard enough okay to make for making the bodies of aircraft buses and tube trains but it is but it is also very strong right and this thing they may ask in your exams okay i will tell you how see the duralumin okay duralumin okay in duralumin as well as in magnesium in both the cases okay this aluminium okay which is present it is it is providing lightness okay to the alloy so alloy becomes light while magnesium provides strength okay so here aluminium is providing lightness here magnesium is providing strength to the alloy clear so that's why the alloys are light also and they are hard enough also so that they can be used for making the bodies of aircraft buses and tube trains and also they are also resistant to corrosion as well very important thing clear then they are also used to make light tools yes because see this alloy is light one because of this aluminium's percentage okay aluminium is giving us the lightness so we are making it to use light tools also we are making pressure cookers also with this dual aluminum okay same way magnesium so magnesium's composition is very easy it also it only has see magnesium now from name you can remember magnesium okay and allium aluminium so in this way so magnesium and aluminium now we know aluminium is the principal metal it would be there from the name magnesium magnesium would also be there okay only two now here also see aluminium is 90 to 95% same type of percentage but just just the change is 90 to 95 it is in the range of 90 to 95 once you would remember the range of aluminium you would automatically remember the range of magnesium because see if aluminium is 90% magnesium would be 10% it would become 100 if aluminium is 95% magnesium would be 5% it would become 100 clear very simple now uses of magnesium again it is used for making aircrafts light tools scientific instruments okay metal mirrors as well and household appliances as well okay and i have also told you that aluminium and magnesium what they are doing their aluminium is imparting lightness and magnesium is imparting strength now why i am repeating it because yes this has been asked in your exams okay and such type of questions can also be asked clear with this let's move ahead to see the next alloys composition he uses okay so this one is stainless steel okay now the principal metal here is iron C seventy three percent and I have told you what what all from what all metals it is made iron okay chromium nickel and carbon this is the non metal okay so if you want to remember these three metals I will tell you a trick if you would if you would uh, if you would actually know the name of the elements from twenty one to thirty okay scandium titanium vanadium chromium 
मैंगनीज आयरन कोबाल्ट निकल कॉपर जिंक ओके सो यू कैन जस्ट स्कीप वन वन मेटल आफ्टर क्रोमियम क्रोमियम स्कीपिंग मैंगनीज आयरन अगेन स्कीपिंग कोबाल्ट निकल सो सी क्रोमियम आयरन निकल क्रोमियम आयरन निकल ओके सो दिस थ्री एलिमेंट्स आर देयर ओके दिस थ्री मेटल्स आर देयर एंड रेस्ट इज कार्बन सो यू वुड जस्ट रिमेंबर स्टेनलेस स्टील कार्बन बिकॉज येस वाई इज दिस इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज हियर द कार्बन इज प्रोवाइडिंग हार्डनेस ओके सो यू कैन रिमेंबर इन दिस वे कार्बन द लास्ट वन ओके बिकॉज इट इज प्रोवाइडिंग हार्डनेस टू द स्टेनलेस स्टील सो वॉट इज द परसेंटेज सो प्रिंसिपल आई हैव टोल्ड यू प्रिंसिपल मेटल इज आयरन सो आयरन इज सेवेंटी थ्री परसेंट ओके देन क्रोमियम इज एटीन परसेंट ओके so it would make 83 right and then 91% and then nickel 8% okay so 73 plus 18 and from 18 you can just go to 8% okay just higher to lower you can follow the range so 73 to 18% and then nickel 8% so 91 plus 8 99 and then 1% carbon which makes 100 okay what is the use of stainless steel now see here there are so many uses okay utensils are made up of stainless steel in your home you would definitely have utensils of stainless steel you can ask your mom cutlery is also made up of stainless steel okay ornamental pieces are also made up of stainless steel and very important surgical instruments okay those instruments which are used in surgeries are made up of stainless steel okay very simple very clear now moving ahead to see the alloys in which copper is the principal metal okay see here and those two are brass and bronze now you may have heard about these two alloys very frequently now, but students often have confusion that what is the composition of brass what is the composition of bronze okay so there is a, a some some interesting trick for you see bronze and brass you know principal metal is copper okay so yes copper in both the cases now see here the letter z is there okay but don't fall in love with this letter z because this z does not tell you that here in bronze it is made up of zinc okay the another principal metal other than copper is tin okay not zinc because see tin is 18% okay and here since there is no z you just fall in love for z that is zinc and yes the apart from copper the another metal from which brass is made is zinc okay so in this way you can just remember okay after tin you can just figure out that less last 2% is zinc clear with this part so composition copper and zinc for brass for bronze copper tin and zinc copper tin and zinc clear percentage again copper is principal metal so in your brain it would be that higher percentage what would be for copper so 60 to 70 percent is for copper okay now it would be easier for you to figure out what is the percentage for zinc okay since it is 60 to 70 percent if you would remember this only you would just figure out that 40 to 30 percent would be zinc clear again the uses of brass here are in decorative hardware it is used okay decorative articles you can find the brass door handles okay they can be made up of brass utensils are made up of brass parts of watches musical instruments electrical goods all of them all of these can be made up of brass okay for bronze okay let's see the composition first copper is 80% okay here it is 60 to 70% you it is easy easy to remember that then it would come 80% for bronze okay what would be remaining tin we know that zinc is 2% so tin would be 18% very clear now the uses of bronze so bronze medals now we cannot forget about it because we already know gold silver bronze in this way medals so medals yes fine bronze statues yes very famous you can find the bronze statues also and bronze utensils bronze coins coins are like right now they are not being used means bronze is not being used to make coins but they were being used in the ancient time okay so metal statues utensils coins these are the uses of bronze clear with this part and lastly the solder or fuse metal now this it would it, it like it is new for you maybe you would have heard it for first time maybe i also have heard it for first time only so solder or fuse metal what it is made up of tin and lead very simple tin and lead okay these are the symbols of tin and lead and the composition also very simple 50 50% okay very simple to remember for what purpose it is used see solder or fuse metal so the purposes are also uses are also very easy to remember solder soldering 
ओके फ्यूज मीन्स इलेक्ट्रिकल फ्यूज क्लियर दैट इट नाउ लेट सी सम क्वेश्चन बेस्ड ऑन दिस अलॉय टॉपिक फाइन गिव वन वर्ड और फ्रेज फॉर द फॉलोइंग द सब्सटेंस प्रिपेयर बाय एडिंग अदर मेटल्स फाइन टू अ बेस मेटल ओके इन अप्रोप्रिएट प्रपोर्शन टू ऑप्टेन सर्टन डिजायरेबल प्रॉपर्टीज सो वी हैव जस्ट नाउ सीन सो वी हैव जस्ट नाउ सीन दैट वी आर मेकिंग अलॉयज हाउ वी आर एडिंग द मेटल्स ओके वी आर मिक्सिंग द मेटल्स सी एडिंग other metals to the base metal which means we are mixing the metals base metal means the principal metal now we have seen so many alloys okay i have told you the principal metals of those alloys duralumin magnesium has a, is having principal metal or base metal as aluminum okay we are adding other metals to that base metal okay and we are and what what we are how we are adding in appropriate proportions we have seen a particular percentage of metal is added right and what why we are doing this to obtain certain desirable properties right because we wanted uh, A, a material, okay, which is light enough, which is also strong enough, okay, which is also resistant to corrosion. So these are the desirable properties which we wanted. So that's why we mixed aluminium, we mixed manganese, we mixed magnesium, we mixed copper, and we made duralumin. Okay. So what is this? You one word or phrase for the following. So what is this substance then? They are talking about this substance, which is prepared by adding other metals to the base metal in appropriate proportions to obtain certain desirable properties. So what is this substance then? Simply, we have just now studied everything about that substance, which is alloy, right? So this way, they ask you to apply your brain, you apply your logic in some questions to answer those questions. Okay? Then fill in the blanks from the choices given in the brackets. An alloy used to make statues. So just now we have seen statues, bronze statues, right? So bronze is the answer. Okay. Name the following elements. A trivalent metal used to make light tools. So see, light tools we have seen in case of aluminium alloys, right? Duralumin and magnesium. And they are they are telling us which metal? A trivalent metal. So see, everything is pointing towards aluminium, right? Because aluminium is trivalent, Al three plus. okay it is a metal very nice very fine and it is used to make light tools yes absolutely we are we are using aluminium we are mixing some other metals in it and we are using that alloy which is formed to make light tools so in turn we are actually using aluminium to make light tools right next is choose the correct answer from the options given below the reason for using aluminium in the alloy dur alumin is okay so i have already told you when we were studying dur alumin okay what what the what what would be the reason among this four c aluminum is brittle no absolutely not aluminum is a metal and it is not brittle okay it is strong enough okay so this is wrong aluminum gives strength no magne magnesium gives strength right we have studied aluminum is imparting lightness so aluminum is bringing lightness yes we have got a right answer okay aluminum lowers melting point not relevant with this question okay here no point in discussing this option at at all because not relevant at all okay we know we directly know aluminum is bringing lightness right we have studied this thing so our right answer is aluminum brings lightness clear next is match the alloys given in the column 1 these are the alloys given in the column 1 to the uses given in the column 2 these are the uses given in the column 2 so first duralumin see out of this electrical fuse surgical instruments aircraft body decorative articles what is more much what, what is much matching see duralumin i have told you bodies of aircraft bodies of trains right tube trains bodies of buses duralumin so yes bodies of aircraft aircraft body okay solder solder other name is fuse metal so i have told you how to remember solder means soldering fuse metal means electrical fuse so out of this see electrical fuse here okay solder electrical fuse then brass decorative articles right it is used we have just now studied and then stainless steel what is remaining is surgical instrument and yes we know stainless steel is used for making surgical instruments i have told you clear next is name the main component of the following alloys now main component means the principal metal okay which i have told you in case of all the alloys so in case of brass the brass is the alloy which is having principal metal copper right we have studied so copper is the main component fine and duralumin duralumin aluminium and magnesium aluminium right we yeah, we also have studied this thing so very very easy questions are also being asked and the last question name the following an alloy of lead and tin that is used in electrical circuits okay so we have studied fuse metal right fuse metal 
is used for making electrical fuse right and electrical fuse if you would know you would have heard a lot of times that fuse has been blown off and all those things so yes you can just relate it it is used in electrical circuits right it is used actually used in electrical circuits and i have told you that you may have heard in some uh, when whenever your parents are talking that fuse has gone and all those things okay it used to happen in the old days maybe now it is not much more frequent but yes so fuse metal is the answer okay because we know this is an alloy of lead and tin 50 50 percentage composition and fuse metal is used for making electrical fuses which is used in turn in electrical circuits okay so friends with this we have reached the end of this video and i hope you would have understood all the concepts of this chapter which we have learned so far in this video right and you would, you would have also enjoyed learning with me because i truly enjoyed teaching you this all these topics all these concepts but please do let me know this thing in the comment section and as you all know learn of matlab free hai par best hai so stay tuned we will meet in the next video with the next chapter till then bye bye and have a great day